In this video, we will look into a few important ratios for project management. With these ratios, you can test and track a project's performance very easily. Broadly, we will categorize these ratios in seven categories. Profitability, earned value, liquidity ratios, efficiency ratios, debt ratios, cash flow ratios, and receivable ratios. Ratios are important because the profit and loss statement of a project does not always tell the truth while the project is still in progress. But if you drag the project management ratios, you can review a project sales very easily. Investors and bankers also review these ratios at a company level before they invest or sanction a loan. Now we will see what are the important ratios one by one. Category A are the profitability ratios. The first Profitability ratio that we will look into is the gross profit margin. The gross profit margin is the gross profit divided by the total revenue into 100. For example, if a project's revenue is 450 million and profit is 40 million, then gross profit margin is 40 divided by 450 into 100, that is 8.9 percent. The gross profit margin of a project should be tracked over months and any major variation with respect to budget must be acquired further. Next comes the net profit margin which is also a profitability ratio and it is net profit divided by the total revenue of a project into 100. For example, if a project's revenue is 425 million and profit is 30 million, then the net profit margin is equal to 30 divided by 425 into 100, that is 7.05%. Let us understand what is net profit. Net profit is gross profit minus the operating expenses minus the taxes minus the interest for a project. Let us understand this with an example. Say a project's revenue is 450 million. The gross profit is 40 million. Operating expenses is 20 million. Tax is 9 million and interest payable for the project is 2 million. So, the net profit margin of the project will be 40 minus 20 minus 9 minus 2, that is 9 million. So, the net profit margin percentage will be 9 divided by 450, that is the 2 percent. The net profit margin of a project also should be tracked over months and any major variation with respect to the budget must be inquired further to avoid any change or fabrication. The next profitability ratio that we will look into is the return on investment or ROI. Return on investment equals to the net profit divided by the total investment into 100. Now we know what is the net profit and there is a difference between the investment and the revenue. The first is the cash pumped by the promoters and the latter is what is billed to the client. Say a project's revenue is 450 million, but the organization has invested 50 million in this project in terms of initial resources while starting the project. The net profit after deduction of operating expense, tax and interest is 9 million. So return on investment will be 9 divided by 50, that is 18%. These three ratios are the first indication of a project sale which you can derive from the profit and loss statement of a project. But PL statement is always advisable to study along with the other financial ratios that we will discuss further in this video. Category B is the earned value ratios. To track a project's progress and cost, the earned value ratios are extremely effective. Important earned value ratios are the planned value, earned value, cost performance index, Schedule Performance Index, Cost Variance, and Schedule Variance. In our channel, we have already posted a video in detail that describes how to calculate the earned value ratios. The link is given in the description. We request you to watch the video so that you understand the entire mechanism of earned value analysis. Category C is the Liquidity Ratios. The first liquidity ratio that we will see is the Current Ratio. Current ratio is equals to current assets divided by current liabilities. Now to understand current ratio, we have to understand what is a current asset and what is a current liability. The example of assets for a project are receivables from client, inventory, fund available for use, planted equipment, 
इन्वेस्टमेंट से पेनी कैश और कैश इक्विवेलेंट एंड रिटेंशन मनी डिडक्टेड बाई क्लाइंट सेग्रीगेट विच एसेट्स आर एक्सपेक्टेड टू बी कन्वर्टेड विद इन वन ईयर दो सार योर करेंट एसेट्स फर्दर द एग्जाम्पल ऑफ लाइबिलिटीज ऑफ ए प्रोजेक्ट आर पेबल्स टू कॉन्ट्रैक्टर्स एंड वेंडर्स अनरिकवर्ड एडवांसिस पेड बाय द क्लाइंट टैक्स पेबल टू गवर्नमेंट डेट्स शॉर्ट और लॉन्ग टर्म बैंक लोन इफ एनी एंड अनपेड स्टफ बेनिफिट सेग्रीगेट विच आउट ऑफ दिस लाइबिलिटीज आर टू बी पेड विद इन वन ईयर दो आर योर करेंट लाइबिलिटीज सो टू गेट द करेंट रेशियो फर्स्ट स्टेप इज टू कैलकुलेट द एसेट्स एंड लाइबिलिटीज देन सेग्रीगेट विच एसेट्स आर एक्सपेक्टेड टू बी कन्वर्टेड टू कैश विद इन वन ईयर next to segregate which liabilities are to be paid within one year then divide the current assets with current liabilities to get the current ratio a good current ratio typically falls within the range of 1.5 to 3 this range indicates that the project has sufficient assets to cover its short term obligations without holding excessive idle assets Here's the breakdown of what different current ratios might indicate. On this scale, zero to one is not enough current assets to cover the current liabilities, potentially indicating liquidity issues in the project. One to one point five means strong cash flow or efficient operations. However, it may also suggest tight liquidity margins. The range one point five to two. is generally considered a healthy range 2 to 3 is a very strong liquidity position with significant buffer and if it is more than 3 then it indicates holding too much of idle cash or inventory and thereby inefficiency of the project next liquidity ratio that we will look into is the quick ratio quick ratio is equals to the current assets minus inventory divided by the current liabilities the only difference from current ratio is here the inventory is deducted from the current assets in the numerator the quick ratio provides a more conservative measure by excluding inventory and other less liquid current assets it focuses on assets that can be quickly converted to cash providing a clearer picture of a company or project's immediate liquidity a good quick ratio typically falls within the range of 1 to 2 this range indicates that a company or a project has sufficient liquid assets to cover its current liabilities without having to rely on the sale of inventory on this scale 0 to 1 means potentially liquidity issues 1 to 1.5 means adequate liquidity 1.5 to 2 means healthy liquidity position and 2 plus means holding too much idle cash or inventory and thereby inefficiency of the project category d is the efficiency ratio the first efficiency ratio that we will see is the asset turnover ratio or atr the asset turnover ratio means total revenue divided by total assets in the project atr depends on the project type and size asset intensity revenue recognition and operational efficiency a good atr in construction projects typically falls within the range of 1.5 to 2.5 this range indicates that a project is utilizing the assets efficiently if it is less than 0.5 then the project is almost stalled and no work is being done if it is 0.5 to 1.5 you can say it is generally common in the construction industry due to the high value of fixed assets if it is 1.5 to 2.5 it indicates efficient use of assets relative to industry norms and if it is Greater than 2.5, then it is a very efficient use of assets. The return on assets in another efficiency ratio, and it means the net profit divided by the average total assets. ROA depends on the project type and size, asset intensity, revenue recognition, and operational efficiency. A good ROA in construction projects typically falls within the range of 5 to 10%. This range indicates that project is utilizing its assets efficiently. 0 to 5% is average ROA. If it is more than 5% and below 10%, it is considered a good ROA and if it is more than 10%, then it is a high ROA. 
Inventory turnover ratio or ITR is another efficiency ratio which means the cost of consumed items divided by the average inventory in the project. ITR depends on the nature of inventory, project duration and complexity and supply chain efficiency. Consider a construction project where the following financial data is existing. Cost of the goods sold is 5 million. Beginning inventory for a period is 1 million and ending inventory for that period is 1.2 million. So the average inventory is beginning inventory plus ending inventory divided by 2 that is 1.1 million. So the inventory turnover ratio is 5 that is the cost of goods sold divided by 1.1 that is the average inventory which is almost equal to 4.5. A good ITR in construction projects typically falls within the range of 3 to 6. This range indicates that a project is utilizing the assets efficiently. If it is 0 to 3, it is the average ITR. If it is 3 to 6, then it's a good ITR. And more than 6, it's considered as a high ITR. Category E is the debt ratios. These ratios are different from the earlier ratios that we have depicted in this video. These ratios are to be studied at the company level and not at the project level. So the first debt ratio that we will see is the debt to equity ratio or DE ratio. The debt to equity ratio is equals to the total debt of a company divided by the shareholders equity. DE ratio depends on the specific circumstances of the company, the project load on the company, the economic conditions prevailing and historical performance. Debt means a company's total short and long-term liabilities. Shareholders equity represents the amount of money that would be returned to shareholders if all the assets were liquidated and all the company's debts were paid off. Consider a company with the following financial data. The debt is 200 million and shareholders equity is 500 million. So the debt to equity ratio will be 200 by 500, that is 0.4. In this example, a DE ratio of 0.4 indicates that the company debt is 0.4 times its shareholders' equity. DE ratio between 1 to 2.5 is generally acceptable for construction companies. If it is 0 to 1, then its average 1 to 2.5 is a good DE ratio and more than 2.5 is a high DE ratio considered for construction projects. The interest coverage ratio is another debt ratio, which is operating income divided by the interest expense. Operating income means the profit generated by a project. Interest expenses means the interest paid on the loans or other debt instruments used to finance the construction activities. Say a project's profit margin in a year is 2 million. And the company has taken a loan of 3 million at an annual interest rate of 12% to finance the project. The interest expense for one year would be 30 lakhs into 12%, that is 3 lakhs 60,000. So the interest coverage ratio is 20 lakhs divided by 3 lakhs 60,000, that is 5.56. ICR greater than 2 is generally acceptable for construction projects. If it is 0 to 1.5, you can say it is a poor ICR. For 1.5 to 2, it is acceptable. 2 to 3, it is a comfortable ICR. And more than 3, it is considered as a strong. And more than 3, it is considered as a strong ICR. The category F is the cash flow ratios. The first one is the operating cash flow ratio which is equals to the operating cash flow divided by the current liabilities. Now you know what is the current liability and we will see what is the operating cash flow. This is a simple numeric example for a construction project for a particular month where the cash inflow example is given. It is the cash coming to the company from any outside source like payment from client refund from the supplier, payment of the scrap sold. So the total inflow here is 2,6,000. And the cash outflow means the money going out from the project. That can be the payment to the suppliers and subcontractors, wages and salaries paid to the staff, 
and workmen, utilities and overhead payments. So the total outflow here in this example is 180,000. So the operating cash flow will be total inflow minus the total outflow that is 26,000. If the current liabilities of the project is 25,000, then the operating cash flow ratio will be OCF divided by CL that is 26,000 divided by 25,000, 1.04. A OCF ratio greater than 1 means the project has enough cash to meet the current liabilities. Hence, OCF ratio more than 1 is considered as a good OCF ratio. Next is the free cash flow ratio, which is the operating cash flow minus the capital expenditures. We are taking the same example of the earlier project where the operating cash flow was 26,000. So, if the capital expenditure for the same project is 20,000, then pre cash flow will be 26,000 minus 20,000 and equals to 6,000. A positive free cash flow that is greater than zero means that after covering all operational and capital expenses, the project has 6,000 available for other uses. Hence, a positive free cash flow is considered a good free cash flow for a project. Category G is the receivable ratios. The only receivables ratio that we will need is the daily sales outstanding. Daily sales outstanding or DSO is equals to the accounts receivable amount divided by the average daily sales of the project. Say a project's yearly revenue in a year is 20 billion. So, its average daily sales is 20 into 10 lakhs divided by 365 that comes down to 54,795 per day. Say the accounts receivable of the project is 5 million. So, the DSO or daily sales outstanding will be equals to 5 million divided by 54,795 which comes approximately 91 days. This signifies the efficiency of the project to get their dues released from the client or the receivable collection from the client. If DSO is 30 to 60 days, it can be considered as a good DSO for a construction project. Regular monitoring and analysis of these ratios together would avoid data manipulation and help one to assess the situation of a project, making informed decisions and managing projects efficiently. If you have liked this video, please subscribe to our channel for more such videos on project management. If you have any query, you can ask in the comment box. Thanks for watching.